Gardner, who is both a free software programmer and a designer. So he has things to tell us about both of these things, and um, all sorts of things that I can't summarize, I can't really understand at all about how free software can affect design, how the principles of free software might affect or not affect design, and how design can change software. And, uh, it's just a very interesting constellation of things he's been working on. So please welcome Mushan. Thank you very much. Um, just give you some context. I'm first and foremost a designer. Um, can you hear me well? Okay. Um, so I'm first and foremost a designer, and I've been introduced to the free software. There was uh, some discussion about um, about Flash da downstairs, and uh, I used to I used to develop for the web using Flash, and I got the kind of uh, uh, pre pretty. Um, pretty disappointed with Flash when he didn't uh, support writing in my language, uh, which is Hebrew. Uh, that's where my uh, funny accent is coming from as well, in Israeli. Um, and, and in 2003, we did, uh, I initiated a, um, a, a, a petition against, uh, against then uh, Macromedia, um, kind of briefing of uh, their uh, the problem is that, that Flash didn't support right-to-left uh, languages, um, and, and and basically we started a petition called the Right to Flash, um, and um, and the, the the motto of uh, of Macromedia back then was uh, what the web can be, and in that petition, uh, which was a, a petition a petition um, initiated by both Israeli and, and uh, an Israeli and, and the Palestinian, both suffering from the same pr uh, problem because of our shared culture, um, we, we were saying, are we not a part of what the web can be? And the, we, we got a lot, of, uh, a lot of people to sign the petition. People were, yeah, Flash should support right-to-left languages. And it took them another seven years to, to support uh, right-to-left languages. Uh, in that process, um, I, I, I got some feedback from, from a friend who said, well, you, you're asking the wrong question. The, the question should not be, around like wh what are we going to ask of macromedia to support it's about uh, it's about why can't we support it ourselves um and and that's I, I was like i don't know i'm usually i usually like like to argue um and i can i don't have a good argument for you and you're right and i should c kind of transition um towards free software and uh in in the process i've i've uh, started my own uh, free software uh, project called shift space which I'll mention a bit later, um, but just for, for the, that's kind of a background, but uh, just for the affiliations, I teach at the Media Culture and Communication Department at, at NYU and at the um, a graphic design uh, program in, in, uh, in, at Parsons, the, the, and I'm also a, a resident at IBEAM, an art and technology center here in uh, New York. Now, the class that I teach at uh, Parsons is called the Open Source Design, and as a designer, I was like, obviously there's an issue with open source and design, um, I, I, I am one of the people who can identify open source software by its bad interface. Um, so I'm a designer and I'm excited about open source, there has to be something to do about it. Um, just a note, okay, one second, I need to center something here. Okay, oh, it will be fine. Uh, anyway, n j just a note about uh, this presentation. Uh, this, the, the text for this presentation, um, um, the essay basically that I wrote uh, about open source design is a part of Collaborative Futures. It's, an, um, it's a free software project of its own. It's um, a crea Creative Commons licensed book, uh, collaboratively written as a part of the Floss Manuals project that Andy would be talking about later today. Um, and I'll move on now. One second, I think. Have a bit of an issue here. Oh yeah. Okay. So that should be good. Okay. So um, um, so open source is great, really great. But can we really say, uh, say that it exists beyond code? I, I know there's a lot of us that, that are rushing to say with open source uh, architecture, open source democracy, open source, open source this, open source that. Uh, but how can we how can we really claim that before? Within open so open so free and open source software, we have yet to master uh, the inter the software interface design, and and I would argue that we have not mastered it yet. 
and there are, there are some reasons for that. Now, I have this diagram that I've been uh, using to try to explain to myself what, things about the, about the open source process. So this is me on the top left, and this is my goal over there. When, when the road to reaching my goal is like just straightforward, I really don't have any reason to collaborate, and I usually don't collaborate. Um, I just reach my goal, and, and that's it. Uh, but for better or worse, uh, many of my problems look like that, and uh, more complex. And for better or worse, I'm not alone. Um, there's a, there are a lot of people um, that, are, that have different goals and they're all trying to reach them. Uh, when they're walking alone, um, the road is pretty long. When they actually find that there's a point where they might be able to collaborate, um, they can meet uh, halfway through, maybe write some documentation to make sure that, that getting there is easier, and move to get together uh, from there, and at some point break uh, and reach their own um, their own goals, and um, that's where collaboration happens. Um, I don't need to explain this to many of you, uh, but this is uh, kind of uh, the way I've framed it visually. Um, so w one thing that we need to take into account uh, as uh, if we're just starting to lay, the, lay out the, the problems in importing this process is, is the idea of scratching an itch. So a, a lot of the uh, discussion about open source is that uh, designers are, um, developers are, are scratching their own itch. So why, why open the code? Because it's easy, and it, and it makes, me, uh, makes other help me uh, get my goal. So I set a goal for, for myself, basically set a goal of making the computer do what I want the computer to do. Um, if I set it right, others might be able to help me. Even if they won't help me, um, I can put the code out there, and, um, and it would make sense uh, to people. It's not, it's not a big investment for me. Why open the design? Um, and it's kind of, it, it might be much harder to open the design process. Um, and and does this idea of works for me, right? When you, when you guys are developing, if you develop the software from scratch, you, you're just writing this code. At some point, uh, the code works for you. And from that point on, to invest in explaining the code to other people is, is coming from a different motivation. So it works for you. The, the, that, that's, that's basically where I, I would say a lot of the motivations change. They don't disappear, but they change. Um, and, and that's something to take into account. Th this, this point is right both about interface design and about documentation. Um, so we have a chicken and egg problem. And I'm suffering from the chick this chicken and egg problem myself. Um, I was very anxious about coming to you today uh, with this computer running uh, the operating system that, that it comes with. Um, and, and I was like, maybe I should in, install uh, Debian just to give respect to these people who are doing amazing w work. But that's basically not what I came to talk about. So, you know, I was grappling with it. I decided what I've decided, and I hope it's a good decision. Um, so excuse me if I hurt your feelings by, by presenting the way I do. Um, but, but there is a chicken and egg problem here. And the chicken and egg problem is that the designers don't use open source software because uh, the interface is, is, is not very user friendly and it doesn't suppo support uh, their work. And because they don't use open source software, they're also not making it better. And they're not making it better, they're not making the, u the user interface better. We have this chicken and egg problem that, that is not broken. Um, and I do acknowledge that that's a part of the problem. The, the different issue is granularity. Um, what makes uh, coding and writing work uh, in a collaborative fashion, it, to a large degree, is the granular um, building block. The, the idea that at, at the core, there's a character. And, and what do you get from the character? You, you get a, a very um, level of contribution. Basically, there's a very accessible ladder of contribution. If, if we're taking a, a wiki, for example, I, I can contribute for, to a wiki by fixing a, a typo, and I can contribute to a wiki by writing a, a whole set of articles. The, I, I can, the, the first step is really easy. The fact that the, the first step is really easy is crucial. The same, the same with code. If I, if I see that somebody forgot a semicolon at the end of, of, a, of, a, of a line, I can submit that and I've submitted a patch, basically. And at the same time, I can, I can maintain a module and so, and so on. The, the, the are really, uh, the, this ladder of contribution is key to, to the way uh, people get into open source software. Um, you're getting history, moderation, and transparency out, out of this aspect. And, and th these are things that we still don't have as easily in the design process. Now, maybe the most important point is about language. Um, 
I'm really inspired by, the, by this essay by Stuart Hall called uh, Encoding and Decoding. Um, I, al I also think it's interesting how encoding and decoding are uh, uh, terms that we're very familiar with in, in technical terms, uh, as, as technical terms, but he was talking about encoding and decoding as cognitive processes. Uh, and he's, uh, and he's, uh, he's looking at the, um, at the communication cycle. And, and what he's saying is that uh, at the process of my thoughts, my framework of knowledge becoming speech, um, th there's a process of encoding. And, and that encoding is a creative process. My thoughts are not my speech. The, the, this is something that, that is encoded into speech and encoded with ideas and so on. And actually, like, and, and then we, we can communicate, if we're talking about speech, we can communicate uh, in mutual language, and I'm assuming and hoping that most of you can understand me. Um, and, and then th there's another creative process, another uh, um, decoding process of making that sound uh, translate into thoughts. In these processes, the, the message changes. And that, that is key to understand, because this is, uh, so, so I, I tried to communicate A, and the other, the other person uh, understood B. And, and this is a part of what we as designers need to work with. Um, what happens when we code? When we code, we code with one code. So my thoughts are, uh, are communicated into a code that the com computer can decode. If I'm trying to, to encode A, a and uh, if, I, if, I, if the computer is, is, uh, is decoding A and expecting A and I'm speaking B, we're getting an error. Now, at that point, I know that something is broken about my code, and, and that's amazing. The fact that, the fact that I can get an error, um, an error message is great, because I, it, when, if a, any of you don't understand what I'm talking about, I don't get a little X above your head. And I can, I, I have one student actually, that I do get a little X above her head when, when she, she doesn't understand what, what I'm saying. She's, she's gonna, like that, and then, yes, error, error message. And, and, and then I, I, I can say, okay, I'll, I'll go and, and communicate this message again. But, but we don't have that in communication, definitely when we're talking about communication that is not face-to-face. Uh, -face. Um, what we're getting from this single code in, in coding is that the same code that we, enco th that we use for programming locally is the same code that we upload to a server and the same code that is then downloaded from a server and, and collaborated upon with another, uh, dev with another developer. We're basically all using the same code. Um, so as a part of this encoding, when we're talking about the design process, defining a new, a, a new code, defining a new language from the beginning is, is the first step that we do in design. So uh, we, we define graphic, color, layout, anim animation, interaction, languages. Just try to imagine trying to, to write a new programming language every time you're going to start a new project. Uh, the, the first question you guys are asking about, uh, before you start collaborating on code, you, you're saying, what language is it written in, right? Uh, th this, this is the, the, the standard of, of, of communication. We don't have that. We have like endless languages that we need to in, in reinvent every time uh, as, a, as a part of a, of a communicative message. Um, so, so we need to set co collaboration standard. Uh, th that's both for code and, and for, and for collaboration, uh, different type, types of collaboration. So th that's kind of the first step. Um, the collaboration standard, uh, when we're talking about coding, is, is the coding language. Um, but th there is a, a bit of a problem between standardization and innovation. So standardization, to a, to a large degree, is, is at odds with innovation. And, and, and a good standard is a standard that doesn't bar innovation. And that's something that many of you are familiar with as well. When we're talking about decoding, um, as I said, code either executes or not. And, uh, and the message uh, interpretation is not binary. It's not zero or one. See, some of you understand me better. Some of you don't really understand me. And, and I, I don't get messages for, uh, for that and so on. Um, and inconsistency, it's hard for you to read this, right? But for the computer, and just click it, the computer gets it immediately in the exact same way. Um, so I inconsistency uh, fra fragments the, the message, but, but, the, but the, the, computer, the, the computer doesn't care if the code is ugly or beautiful. We care about, about, about if it's ugly or beautiful, or if it's uh, more efficient or, or, or less efficient. The, the computer would care about more efficient, less efficient, but, but the computer create, creates a, a, a le levels the playing field for, for communication. 
and that's an essential aspect of, of collaborating on code. Basically, on every collaboration on code, we have one collaborator that, can, that cannot be reasoned with. And, that co and everybody has to reason with that collaborator. You don't have that in, in other communica communicative um, contexts. And it, a lot of people bring up Wikipedia saying, you know, um, Wikipedia is not about code, but Wikipedia does have a code, that does have standards. You would not have haikus in Wikipedia. You, we, you cannot have a, a, a wiki of, of uh, poetry like you can have. It would suck, right? It's, it, there are guidelines to, to wikis, and, and many of you, I'm sure, that, that have contributed to, com com contributed to Wikipedia have found that people have re reverted real changes because they, because they argued that they don't fit the guidelines, right? Um, so did I come here to tell you that open source design is impossible? Uh, I really hope not because I've been spending too much time thinking about it. Um, but I, have, I actually do seem, see some examples that, that are inspiring as, as the direction to go towards. So um, many people bring up uh, free culture and, uh, and sharing as, as open source design. If you search for open source design, most of the examples that you would get are about sharing. But if we, if we go back to my diagram from before, um, it's, it's more about the forking. It's more about taking a resource and then each person doing something else with it. Maybe you would, you would take it and then collaborate, but, it, but, but sharing doesn't necessarily mean collaboration. Um, so I'm all for sharing, but, but it's not necessarily something that, um, th that is arguing that, um, th that we will have these kind of um, collabora collaborative processes. A very interesting example I see with WordPress. WordPress uh, being a, a, a free software for blogging, and the CMS in general um, have have always taken the the end user in a, into account because many of the users have no idea about code or that that WordPress is even free software. Um, it, WordPress actually hired one. I, I would say not WordPress, but Automatic, the company running WordPress, have hired Happy Cog for the redesign of the WordPress 2.5 admin area. Happy Cog, Cog is one of the most high-end uh, high design uh, firms in the world uh, when we're talking about web design. Um, so you, you see a, a pretty uh, traditional uh, process of, of developing interface, even, even if it's for free software. But, but then in front, WordPress 2.7, the interface was, was um, advanced a lot through the, process, uh, through the internal process within the, the WordPress community. So basically, they took the leadership from Happy Cog and then they translated it forward. If, if we set the, they basically ha had a leadership that sets the standards and then being po pushed forward by the community. And that's what happened with WordPress 2.7. And there's no doubt that WordPress 2.7 is way, way, way um, more uh, user-friendly and more advanced uh, an interface than WordPress 2.5. Um, as a part of the process of working on this, um, on this redesign, um, the WordPress um, community published um, a call Call, calling all WordPress-loving icon designers, and I uh, and I saw that uh, that post um, as I was teaching the open source design class, and I was like, "Great, it's not in my syllabus, but what the hell? Let's have oh, let, let's be a part of an open source design process that we're using already, and let's contribute the class as designers to to WordPress." And I emailed my students. I told them, you know, tell me if you want to do this because it's not in the syllabus, and I'm not, you know, you'll still need to do all of your other assignments. Um, do, do you want to do, to do this together? And they were like, yeah, let, let's do it. It's an exciting uh, opportunity for designers to actually contribute to such, uh, to such a great uh, piece of software. Um, and we indeed um, developed icons. And when, the, when th th there were a bunch of uh, icon sets that were submitted to, to, to the WordPress community, and, and the way um, Automatic leading, leading that uh, process have... Um, have um, process the, the um, contributions is through a form. Now, obviously, you would expect questions like, uh, how do you think the OSD icon set as a, like, how does it function? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? That's obvious. Uh, what do you think about each one of the icons? That's also obvious. But what I was really inspired by is questions like these. Like, what do you think about the metaphors? So, in each one of the, uh, of the icon sets, there were different metaphors for, uh, for example, appearance. So in one of them, appearance was a paintbrush, chameleon, open eye, computer display with grid, old school Apple computer, 
uh, stacked computer screens, and, and so on. All of these are contribution of ideas for how to communicate uh, appearance. And that's also why w how we understood that our chameleon is not really communicative. Um, but at, at the end, the, the icon set that was chosen was not ours. It was designed by, uh, by another designer. And what was very interesting is that when we saw the different sets, we knew that ours was not the best one. The main problem that we had was inconsistency. Um, beca because we were seven people working on the same icon set uh, in a very short time, we, it wasn't the same hand drawing them, and, and it did seem like it's inconsistent. And when we saw this icon set, we were like, this is obviously the best icon set. And when we were going through the votes, we were voting for this. We were not voting for our own icon. And then in class, people said yes. Uh, like, and we didn't even have to coordinate this. We understood that, that the point is choosing the best icon set, not choosing our icon. Uh, except one student who was like, what do you guys mean? We were supposed to win. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, but that was... Uh, Fun. Um, other examples. Um, we have um, grid, um, uh, grids in web design. Gri uh, grids are a concept in, um, in graphic design that has been around for decades. Uh, there has been a lot of writing about uh, grid-based design since the, the Swiss school um, of graphic design. And then uh, so some bloggers have been, design bloggers have been writing about how these uh, ideas can be transformed into web design. And then other uh, designers were saying, oh, we can actually create a framework for that. Can, uh, we can actually uh, create a framework around, uh, around graphic design for the web. And that's how uh, Blueprint CSS as a, as a um, grid-based design framework uh, has, uh, has been invented. And basically, based on, on a a Blueprint CSS, other frameworks w have, have developed. So, so you see people um, having a collaborative process um, both, both through, through discussion, documentation, and, and then iteration through code. The, co the code is not a, a programming or a scripting code. It's a, it's a markup code. It's CSS. So, so that's definitely a, a good example of a, of a code-based open source design process. Um, another example, we talked about graphic design. This is for interaction design. You, you guys have probably seen thousands and thousands of different implementations of the light box or model box or Basically, uh, the, the, the alternative to, uh, to, the, to the old pop-up window uh, that opens within your window and, and is uh, less, uh, um, less invasive. Um, th this has been developed by someone and then basically copied and, and been made better and so on because, because the code um, that, that makes this is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it's by definition open. It's by, it might be, the licensing might, might not be open, but you can still I introspect um, what's happening on the, in the browser and learn from it. Uh, so we definitely see a lot, of, uh, a lot of innovation in the front end when we're talking about the um, interaction design. Um, another slide that I have here is for actual documentation. There's a lot of, uh, th th this is taken from Smashing Magazine, which is a web and inter interaction design uh, magazine online. They're writing a lot about um, best practices, and, and that's another way of, uh, in which people can collaborate and move to, together uh, forward. If we, talk, if we talked about um, um, standards, this is a way to st set standards, not, not in the way of saying this is the only way of doing it, but, but, but saying this has worked for many people and you might want to consider that. Um, so definitely blogging and documentation is a very important aspect of this. Why do I have an iPhone slide here? Interesting. Um, bec because the, the, there are some aspects of, of this that, that has to do with, with um, collaboration on design. What, what, what we're seeing here is a, a bunch of, the, of assets and, the, and design APIs. Um, Apple is probably the, the worst example for openness. But then when, uh, when Google Android is, uh, is, um, is being offered as an, as an open alternative, problematic open alternative, but, but still, um, they are following the same line. So following the, li the line of, of actually, here's a, a bunch of best practices for you. you. You don't have to use them, but, but here's an easy way of using them. So again, setting standards and then moving together from, from there is an easier, easier, way, easier way of working. Um, and finally, I have a little plug for my own project. Uh, uh, Shiftspace, uh, we call it an open source layer above any website. And what we're trying to do with it is, um, is it's an attempt to move beyond the, the concept of uh, user-generated content to also user-generated interfaces and basically 
the, the, the kind of innovation that we are seeing around, uh, um, around front-end development in, uh, in JavaScript, this is something that we are um, trying to get people to write, basically write free, uh, free software, uh, free uh, social software in anything uh, from 18 li lines of code. Um, if people want to hear more about it, they can talk about it later. Um, so if we're going to, to fix it, there, there are a bunch of, uh, of things that we can probably done, it, it co probably do. Um, scratching an itch. So free as in free beer is great, and it's a great appeal, but it's not enough. If people would not use a free software because it's free as in free beer if it's not a good software. Um, but, and this is a controversial statement here, I know. Um, I would argue that we cannot uh, expect or force the use of bad tools uh, for ideology, as an ideological statement. It, it might be our ideological statement. Um, it might be a, a just ideological statement. But I, I don't think it, that's the way we can actually make a free software uh, prevail in, 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 the, in, the different, um, in the different challenges that, that it faces. Um, I think we have, we have seen a lot of cases where, where free software is not trying to compete in, in battles al al already won. Like for example, I, I would say I'm using Photoshop. I don't like anything, everything about Photoshop. I might, might be hating a lot of things about Photoshop and I have tons of ideas of how Photoshop can be made better. Not enough to, to ideologically use GIMP because I am basically crippling myself by, by using GIMP because it's so way be behind um, fo Photoshop. And, and, and maybe I'm, a, I'm being a flostitude or whatever but, but by, by doing that. But I, I really think that if we, if we want free software to, to win, we need, we need to, to make sure that it's better. It's, it's, it's automatically better because it's free software on that scale, but it's not necessarily uh, better on other scales as well. And, 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 that's, and the ideological argument is something that, ho that ho holds, in my view, a limited merit. Um, so we, we need to innovate on our strengths. And, and when you're thinking about blogs and wikis, blogs and wikis were invented by the, fr by the free so software um, community. And why were they invented by, by, by us rather than by, by proprietary, proprietary software uh, companies? Because it's coming from the way we're working. It's, it's coming from our culture and from our rationale. So in, in, instead of, uh, of trying to, to make a better Photoshop that, that, that has been developing for 20 years, you know, develop networking tools, develop collaboration tools, de develop tools that, that, would, that are based on our way of seeing the world, that, that things that we really do better. I'm not saying don't do the other things, but, 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 uh, but I'm saying uh, these, are, uh, these are battlefields, you can call it, if you want to be very dramatic, uh, that, that, that we have a, an advantage of, not only because our, our code is open, but because we know more about it. And we've, we've shown it before with wikis and, and blogs. Um, and we are s seeing some success. Um, we, we, it's mainly in web design, and it's mainly based on code, um, which brings me to my next point about granularity. So when it's possible, we should use code. My students are using code uh, from the first uh, day, day in class, even though they have never signed up to be, uh, to, to be coders. But they, they're using code because it's, it makes more sense. They're not using Dreamweaver with, with, with its interfaces and so on because it doesn't make sense, because it's bad software. But, and and they're, they're coding because it's easier and, and it's simpler. The first thing that, that they're doing in class is installing file bugs. And, and I'm telling them, I'm not going to teach you every HTML element there. First of all, because I don't know every HTML element that, that is out there. Second, because you can learn yourself. So if you, s if you look at the web as a, as, as a repository of, of things you can learn from, th that, that is a first step to towards um, becoming a hacker. And I think designers should be hackers. Uh, not necessarily developers, but definitely hackers. Um, so another, th another way in which I'm... Uh, I'm um, I'm kind of uh, scaring my students into the geeky points of the world uh, is uh, by putting them on version control systems and experimenting with, um, with versioning tools uh, like Git and Dropbox. Now, Dropbox, again, not, not free software, but we should have thought about it first. Um, it's very useful for, for collaboration. Um, and all, all of my design students are, have, uh, have their own uh, Git repositories for, for all of their projects. Um, and it makes sense to them. It, it's not like, 
oh, we need to do that because uh, our professor is kind of a religious uh, free software advocate. Um, and finally, language. Um, I, th I think we can, uh, I give the examples of researches, we can do networked researches, we already have the tools for that. So, so de definitely try to come up to, to, to see how people are using software, how, how is it being um, um, evaluated together and come up with, with the best practices together. Um, try to use um, extensible languages, so CSS is a good example of that, in the sense that you can say everything of this type should look like that, with the exception of this, with the exception of this, with the exception of this. Um, wh when you're saying everything should, be, should look like that, then, then you're setting the standard. A and, and that's an easier way of collaborating. It's also code base, which, which is helping the other aspect. Um, and document the language. And documenting the language is, uh, is something that we already know how to do as designers. Designers have been, have been creating what's called style guides for many years because they're creating brands and so on that are, that are then used by other people. That's, that's a different model of collaboration, but when, when, when you don't have control over how w your design would, would be used, you should do, uh, co communicate why you made your, uh, these decisions, and we already know how to do that. When, you, when we're talking about collaborative decoding, um, some design decisions are actually rational. Um, and and if, they can, if they are rational, we can uh, agree on, a, we can come to a consensus on them. For example, uh, user experience research, um, technical aspects of design, and, and design best practices. Uh, we can think of uh, interaction paradigms. You're seeing a te text with an underline under it. Like, anyone has a guess what this means? It means that it's probably a link, right? And indeed, it's a link, right? Um, so so that, that's, a, that, that's, an, uh, that's an interaction um, interaction design paradigm that has been defined and been set as a standard. So we can develop these things together. We, we, can, we, we obviously uh, should always have the option of over, over reading, overriding them as well um, to, to make sure that, um, uh, that standardization and innovation do, don't clash or clash as little as possible. Um, and finally, blogs are a great way of sharing resources and documentation. Um, I've been really interesting, interested in this idea of scaling subjectivity. In, in, to a large degree, um, what we're trying to do with design is to scale a subjective, ex in a subjective experience. Because if you had a bad day and you're opening your computer, you might be expecting to use it differently than, than, than another day, not to even speak about um, different people, different languages, different contexts, and so on, um, different computers. Um, and, and basically, each one of, we're trying to create an, an experience that, that, is sub, that is subjective because the, the subjective uh, interpretation of interfa the interpretation of interface is subjective. But then we're trying to scale it up. So basically, this is a paradox, and, and th this paradox is in the heart of design. Um, so I've been really interested in how can we get better about this uh, scaling subjectivity paradox. And, um, and, and this is an interesting uh, example uh, for me. In, on, the, on the left, you have uh, the magic mouse that Apple came up with. As you can see, no buttons. Um, or basically, it's one big button. Uh, on, on the right, you're seeing the open office mouse. A lot of opportunity. Um, wh what I'm arguing is that, that this is a, th these are two models of, of thinking about design. One of them is about a, a very firm leadership. The other one is, is about a great openness. I think both of them are flawed, but I think both of them ha have the answer. And the answer should be not, not leadership or openness, it should be a combination of leadership and openness. And, th and that is what, um, what, what, where free software shines. That's also the, the political um, promise that, that inspires people about, the, about free software. And, and that's something that we should keep in mind. So if we're thinking about a, a bit of a more nuanced analysis of, uh, of, open source, uh, of the open source process, it's a combination of openness and leadership. Because somebody, in, in my project, uh, we started the, the project two, two developers. Um, to, today, uh, one of the developers is, is, less, uh, um, is, is less involved, another one is much more involved. Th this idea of, of leadership on one hand, and then the, the, the ability to, to say, we can move on, we can, we can open, um, we can open the door to, to new input and new, and new leadership is key in, in open source and should be a key in open source design. Um, so I'm, I'm arguing that we can't just sprinkle the pixie dust of open source on, um, on design and expect uh, beautiful things to happen because we've seen that it doesn't. 
um, and that collaboration is hard, but we can probably uh, make it better. One uh, way of for you to help me make it better is I put all of this presentation um, on GitHub. I might not be using um, uh, Debian as my operating system, but my presentation system is all HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So it's all there. You can fork it uh, if you have your own presentation. And I'll be even more happier if you fork it to tell me what you think about uh, open source design and change it. Um, so I would love to open it to questions and discussions. example. Um, I, I must say that I'm trying it every now and then. Um, I still find it very inferior to the proprietary uh, competition and I'm still um, frustrated about the fact that they're, they're fighting their own fight. They're not fighting uh, the, 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 the fight about collaboration, they're, they're fighting the fight, uh, the fight about um, w winning in, in a game that they haven't set. Do you mean because they're concentrating on um, scalable vector graphic format? Of Adobe Illustrator, and, and and they're trying to win there now. Adobe Illustrator is is not a great piece of software. It's buggy. It's it crashes all the time. It's not very innovative. I think that in in that sense, there's a lot more. Um, innovation happening um, in, in Inkscape, but I, I, I found it, I, I'm trying to use it every now and then, and I, I find myself going back to Illustrator because I, I find the interface really hard to manage. Now there's only so much interface that I can actually go and, go and edit myself, and so much time that I can invest in open source softwares, uh, software myself, um, and I wish I could say that it's better, uh, some features are much better, based mainly the technical features. But when you when you, we're coming to the to the ease of use, and and, and that's the selling point Beca because the 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 kind of use that you, that you have with graphic uh, and media software is is so intense. Like if something is is in your way, it gets you frustrated fa uh, fast, and and you basically drop it. And 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 that's a very very hard uh, bar, bar to to fight from. But but I would say if if, for example, and, uh, and we talked about it here, um, uh, there were some discussions about open source design before, uh, during lunch, and um, if, if you can uh, take the collaborative um, concepts of, uh, of version control and, ma and merge that with, with collaboration on, on, on graphic software, th then you can start to have in innovation from a completely different angle, and, and, and then say, you know, the reason I'm using Inkscape, yeah, Inkscape is, is inferior in a lot of senses to, to Illustrator, but it's much better for, for collaboration, and, that, and that's why I'm using it. it th that's also why I'm using uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for, for my presentation, because, because uh, on this presentation or other presentations, I have the need to collaborate, which none of the other uh, uh, presentation softwares um, actually allow me. So, so I, I'm, I'm just saying, it's not that, that, that this, this is wrong to fight that battle. I'm just saying, strategically, we can probably uh, address it from a different angle. So in terms of collaboration, um, then a, a, an outgrowth or side effect of Inkscape is the open clip art dot yeah. or, or, um, I guess that's, that's where you'd see the action, is the collaboration happening there, the, the, the forking and, and, and um, work on uh, taking... Yeah. Uh, to, to those of you who don't know, uh, Open Clip Art is uh, 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 an open repository for uh, for uh, graphics and vector graphics and a, a lot of assets. I I think it's an it's an amazing uh, um, it, it's an amazing um, um, 
um, development in, in this field, and it's the kind of things that uh, the, the, the kind of thing that we can that we have an advantage in. It's still in the field of um, free culture and and sharing, which which I'm saying is always the first step. It's always the first step, but but it but it is not um, it's not the last step. Like we need we need to move forward into collaboration. And an example that I should probably add in, into the this presentation is uh, is Floss Manual, which uh, which Andy would be uh, would be talking about uh, later today. So, so if we have only ten minutes, then we'll keep Floss Manual later. Yeah, um, make fun of them. Well, one thing for the for uh, for the, the Adobe products are all kind of integrated together, and I think in addition to ease of use, it's it's the integration. If if the free open source design tools could, or the features of of the free open source design tools could all kind of bubble up to one layer above, either use the same libraries that allow you to, to share information between these multiple applications that are really good at doing what they're written to do, um, then that would be that would be another win for the yeah. open so source design. Basically standardization of the cli of the clipboard uh, into the level of copy paste be between between software. That's that's something that is a hard sta standardi standardization challenge. Okay, th there was a Um, so, through your talk, you mentioned many aspects, but I think you've forgotten the main one, which goes in parallel to all those and touches all those. It's expertise transfer. So, what, what is collab expertise transfer? So, um, collaboration is not good just for the sake of collaboration, right? If you take 200 C programmers, oh, not, there is no offense, it's just programmers, right? And, they, and then you ask them to create a software with usable, very nice interface. They will not succeed as well if uh, their team, like in any company, they don't just hire programmers, right? They hire designers and many, many more. And it's just for the sake of expert, expertise transfer. So any software product becomes really good when there is a team, many people from different disciplines, and just find this kind of maybe one common goal. So it's like in your diagram, you have one common goal, and every project has them separately, but they join somewhere not because it's there to accomplish something similar, it just there is some decision in similar, right? And this is where all this open source and um, version controls. This is where it just provides means for this expertise transfer. But um, and the aspect of eating your own food that's also important. And as as far as you stay away from using open source, there will be no expertise transfer from your side in terms, of, let's say, for GIMP, right? Mm -hmm. So sacrifices need to be made. Yeah, and, and uh, but but I'm I'm basically asking a, 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 an even earlier question. Yeah, like when we get there, we can start asking like what what is the the transfer of expertise. But but I'm saying like designers don't have enough yeah, incentive to even start <laughs> be, be, being a part of the uh, of of the conversation. They're not oh, they're not really they're not really invited in the in the same way. And and you would say, what do you mean not invited? The code is open. It's important to understand if you don't, if you can't read the the code, it's as it's closed. Right. It's just for designers the problem that there is a lack of actually common points often. So designers don't care about let's say scientific projects, right? That's why maybe many scientific mm -hmm. projects they stay poorly designed mm -hmm. because there is no designer on team and designers don't care about science. Okay. So it's just finding those common points where expertise transfer can occur. Mm -hmm. That's kind of critical for. Getting into the field, I think, and that's why I think, uh, and that's why I join a lot of the calls for uh, the open web, uh, as in as in open standards for design as well. I think HTML, CSS, and, and JavaScript, especially with the whole excitement around HTML5 and CSS3, is is a turn towards tools that both worlds can agree on and and collaborate on. Now, now I know for Debian hackers, this is too high level to even care about, uh, but 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 th this is like to a, to a large degree where, where we're where the kind of things that we're looking at, because when designers are working on on their HTML and CSS, they have the control. They, they don't have to go and ask the developer to say to say this is the way I want it. Please do it that way, because then the the developer is is acting as as the uh, as the, um, um, the 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 doorkeeper, the gatekeeper, um, which is something that we should uh, get rid of. And I completely agree with your point. Um, we need to have uh, a similar uh, process. Have one here. Um, to bring it, uh, the discussion a little bit, focus a little bit more on, on the how uh, coders and designers can collaborate on, and what, what one of the 
the, the weaknesses that we've got is that fine, we don't often don't have coders on our teams. Um, but what designers. suggestions? I did designers on our teams. Um, but other than it seems perhaps you're suggesting that if um, uh, the underlying, uh, let's say, the workhorse code is uh, written in order to be able to use an HTML5 interface, for instance, then if later on a designer shows up, they have more freedom to then go and reconfigure the interface to using it without having to touch the underlying code so much. Beyond that, is there something you can suggest about how one can go about um, structuring projects, or even if you have a designer structuring the communication or the design of the code underneath, so that it's easier to balance out the needs of the designer and the needs of the coders, so that when the time comes, it's an easier not to crack, let's say. Definitely. Um, th this is something I'm really interested in now, and I think that's, that's, uh, that's a great way of, uh, of starting to address it uh, better. The, the whole issue of interaction design, even we were before we were talking about graphic design, that it, both interaction design and graphic design are a part of the, uh, of the design process. So I interaction design is, is definitely um, a, 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 a point, like in the process you, you first uh, create uh, wireframes and you create uh, um, uh, information, information architecture documents where, where the, the point is about interaction design and, and you need to communicate that with, with the programmers that, that's basically saying what does the software do uh, rather than how does the software look. And we don't, have, we don't have good open source tools for doing that, and, and we, we don't have good networking t tools for doing that. The, the, these are points of, of collaboration that, that it, and the fact that we don't have good tools for that, I, I'm saying we don't have proprietary, uh, good proprietary to tools for that. If we want, if we want to, do, uh, to, to disrupt the, the dominance of uh, proprietary software in, in design, especially interface design, that's the first step uh, to do that, to, to actually address this point that, that is basically um, um, unclaimed at this point. There was another one here. Yeah. I can uh, and not having the developers work in the developer silo and the designers in the design silo, and then they only meet when the designers throw. Uh, you know, throw a design document over the wall, and then the developers only work until you know they throw something over to the QA folks. Um, it's about it's about open communication and figuring out you know what are the what are the business needs of the software, and then what are the like what's the real stuff that's going on, and then how are you interacting with it, and, and kind of that user design. So, provided you have that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and when we're talking about free software, we don't necessarily have designers on the team before. I'm not a graphic designer by any stretch of things, but um, you said there were some uh, critical problems with Photoshop that, that caused you to hate it. I was wondering if there was some amount of money that if thrown it would solve those problems. Um, because Photoshop isn't cheap and a lot of people use it. Um, maybe, but I think more than money, it's an issue of leadership. Um, and because, you know, money, money is very problematic when we're talking about free software. Um, and about uh, and it's it's not li like designers are not joining because uh, there's not money for them. The same way that that, uh, that developers are not um, are not necessarily n not gaining uh, monetary uh, gains by by free software. A lot of you guys in the room are making your living from free software. Um, so so it's n I don't think it's the money. The money can help, but it's not the first thing. It's uh, the first thing is to change the discussion. The discussion should be about what are we good for in? What is our experience? A and, and what are the tools that we've been using in other aspects? And how can they change different processes? And, and before we go, we go and talk about open source democracy, let's make sure that, that, that we're getting our, that the processes that we're so excited about work within our own field, which is software development, right? So, so the processes we have perfected to a certain degree, a lot of collaborative processes, Let's understand how to use them right, and that would be our, our, our um, intervention I into the design process. Interesting. You should come. Thank you very much.
Oh yeah, the, the essay, I didn't say that, but the, the, the links to the slides and the essays are all